If you look at his re uh, his recent film, The Fighter, it's a completely different person. You know, he's a completely different, you know, human being, and that just also makes yeah. it, you know. But people, but that's good acting because people don't don't realize that they just assume that that's how you are, um, that's how he is. But or I, I think at least I don't know. But no, uh, yeah. Um, uh, in my case, I do rec I do recommend it, even though I'm pretty sure oh. everybody has seen it by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's. it's you know, go out and see it, you know, say to your kids in, what, 20, 30 years' time, this was the last good blockbuster, this is how they do it, yeah. you know, just to say you are there. It's like, you know, it's like The Godfather to an extent, it's like The Godfather superhero films, you know, you say you were there, or like you were there to see Jaws when it came out. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of event, yeah. and memorable event cinema that you would uh, take to your grave, basically. Oh yeah, I I agree with you. I think that it is some kind of, that it is an event. Uh, I don't know when when the next time is gonna be where where we're gonna see such an amazing, you know, trilogy, uh, close to being perfect. I don't think we've ever seen a a trilogy this good. Well, well, well. I mean, you got the Lord Toy, of the Rings. Toy but, Story, maybe. Oh, Toy, Toy Story. Story. Toy Story trilogy would have to. Yeah. You know, reserve top place maybe. Yeah, that was a that was a very good one as well. A uh, live action wise, I think, you know, like I think the majority well, I don't know. There's always there's always, you know, people who will disagree. But for me at least I, I think it is. And um and yeah, I don't know. Uh any other shall, shall we shall we wrap this up? So how what would you Yes. What would you be saying is uh your score? My score? Oh yeah, if I had uh I'm probably gonna give it four out of five stars. Right, I would. I probably one lower, just a half lower, three and a half. Okay, not I probably. It's good, but I not think probably. It's... I give it four and a half stars. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. Slap, slap. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> throw it back to me. No, I won't be going any higher. I still, I still agree with my original assumption. And maybe if I see it again, you know, maybe things will come back and yeah. be different this time around. But we'll have to wait and see. I can't yeah. say at the moment, but it's still it's still good. I just don't think it's. I think you should. I think like but... you know, um, obviously, you, there's a lot of things going on that you completely aren't aware. But once you see it again, obviously, knowing everything you know already, mm. it just makes so much more sense and it makes the movie even better. And you know, you're like sitting there. I'm like, ah, oh, how come I didn't catch that? You know, and even with going back to the performances, <laughs> I had my original opinion on a cast member was um, that I didn't, you know, I didn't quite believe their performance because I thought, you know, well, I just didn't believe it. I thought it could have been more, it could have been, it could have been more. Uh, and I'm talking about Marianne Cotillard, but I saw it again and I picked up on little things that she did that, um, that just kind of, you know, it, it proved me wrong. And that performance was good. That performance was like, I realized there was a reason for that kind of behavior. You know, of course, I I should know that by now. It's like the direct. There's never nothing ever nothing that that you ever see like in the screen is not there for like no reason. There's always a reason for every little, especially coming from directors like Nolan, people who know what they're doing. You know, you should trust them, and so um, especially if they haven't really given you. Well, I mean, to me, they haven't really given me like big reasons like enough for them to not to trust them. But no, yeah, I I believe. The, again, going back to the casting, it was good. And Marianne Cotillard being one of my favorite modern actors, um, I think she did a very good job as well. And, of course, we ha we kind of have to, before we go, we kind of do have to talk about Bane a little bit because uh, it's, yes, it's it's not Heath Ledger, it's not the Joker. I mean, the Joker period is, like, what, the most famous um, comic book villain ever? Right, I mean, yeah, any about... any Marvel and DC, so of course it's it's and you know it's kind of hard to follow up with that. But then you have fucking Heath Ledger coming in and just like you know, d destroying everything and like uh, you know, and of course was he was his last perf one of his last yeah. you know, performance. So you got you got all that to live up to. But I think that uh, Tom Brady did a did a did a did not just an adequate job, but I think he. He 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 satisfied for me at least the expectations and it mm -hmm. was obviously it was the fa it was the things that he did mostly like the the horrible 
you know, atrocities that 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 that, you know, that he was capable of doing. Um, but also because you know, I think you, it, it. Yeah, we never saw his mouth, but it's if you really pay attention to just the way that he that Tom Hardy does what he does with his eyes. It's really, it's really amazing, really, and of mm-hmm. course, and of course, his voice. You know, his voice is, was it was really, really menacing, and it's it, sometimes it's something that I. It's a person that I would not want to, you know, want well, to, no. would not I want don't to. Wanna, mess I don't want to mess with Bane and Tom Hardy. Period. Tom oh, yeah. Hardy would be able to, you know, punch my lights about any day of the week. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean if. Tom Hardy with the 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 physique of Bane, because sometimes Tom oh, Hardy yeah. is very thin. That <laughs> it's like, no, yeah, Tom Hardy's a, mean, like... Tom Hardy's a good actor. I'm I'm glad that I I I I got into him way before you know the Dark Knight, before he met Nolan. Um, I believe the movie he I first saw from him was Bronson, but um, yeah, that was a completely different oh, yeah. thing. But no, I think he still he's I think he still has a lot a lot more like. Anne Hathaway, even though I think Anne Hathaway is at the stage where she's going to give us like her best, you know. Um, yes. I think she's it's long overdue. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of good performances here, and and yeah, and and of course, Christian Bell who will remain my favorite Batman. So. Yeah. Same with me. Anything else before we wrap up? Uh, I don't know if you're doing the top threes or if you're leaving that out. I think, yeah, we, we can go ahead and do the top three. Okay. All right. Do you want to go first? Uh, I don't care. Do you want to? You should go first. Last time. I'll go, I'll go first. Okay. Top three time. This is a thing we've essentially nicked from Cisco and Eber and at the movies with whoever went long after Cisco and Eber. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be with movies that are in at the minute. It can just be any movie that we've seen and we recommend. Yeah. And uh, my top three... Um, first one will be uh, Oslo August, the first film by uh, Jacqueline Trier, who's a descendant of Lars von Trier, a cousin or a distant relative or something like that. But it's much better than anything Lars von Trier has ever done. Uh, it's all to do with a, a guy who's living in one day, essentially. He's been a drug addict for a long time. But then he uh, was essentially going into rehab and... Uh, through one day we learn about this character and see him relapse and uh, I found it to be a really gripping, really naturalistic and compelling and strange and fascinating film to watch and I, I highly, highly recommend it. it if it was if it was a film I saw last year, it would be one of the best of last year, that's kind of how good it is uh, my number two would be a film called Michael which I just actually watched today which is a new film that came out this year uh, from a guy whose name is Markus Schlinzer, who is a descendant, not a descendant, but someone who worked with Michael Haneke Hanek, mm-hmm. on his films. It's all to do with a pedophile, which is a wonderful topic to do a film on. And it's essentially about his life and how he copes with uh, work and the outside life while having this secret of essentially kidnapping a child and keeping him locked away half the time but it never you know never goes into the, the sex of it you never see any of that which is good but uh, it's a really you know like Oslo it's it's gripping and it's fascinating but it's fascinating in a different way because it takes a different kind of turn it's all about the the reasons why he's like this why he's a pedophile is it to do with the sex? Is it to do with um, looking for some sort of affection? Is it for there's something he didn't get with childhood? Because there's creepy undertones with it, but there's also kind of like father-like tones to it, very paternalistic. But um, I found it to be pretty fascinating, gripping, and oddly sad by the end, kind of moving, mm-hmm. even though it has a kind of... Uh, uh, a devastating, shocking ending. Uh, I'm one film that is film that's in the cinema at the minute in the UK called Searching for Sugar Man, which is about Rodriguez, who is a musician who was he flopped in America, but he was amazing. He's hugely popular in Cape Town in South Africa. And he basically sparked a revolution at that point. 
and it's a documentary all to do with him and how this happened and how a couple of fans are trying to track down the legacy of uh, Rodriguez and it's a, a music documentary at one, it's a suspense thriller, it's a mystery film, it's a film that's got bold statements about music, it's got, you know, all to do with the, the industry and the musician and the artist and about fame and it's a film and a documentary for me that's got just about everything, great music, great story, it's really heartwarming, it's, you know, it's hard to resist and not like so those would be my three films to recommend at the moment. I have to wait and see till next time to see if the change. What's the name of the three again? What are the names of the three films? Uh, Oslo, August 31st, Michael, and Searching for Sugar Man. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. There you go. To, my, I think I might want to take a look at some of those films. Um, my top three... Uh, of uh, I guess would be let's see uh, number one of course is this um, is this movie that I saw like about a month or so ago but I, I you know I was very intrigued by it um, and that's called and it's uh, Insidious uh, directed by James Wan starring uh, Patrick Wilson and Rose Byrne um, it's uh, it's a film that I didn't really like you know I, I really wasn't interested in watching when it came out in theaters. Um, because I'm very skeptical about like nah, you know modern horror films because I tend to get very I tend to get disappointed by them very fast and easy so um, you know even though I love horror films like I love all genre but genres but that one you know I, I just I just love them I, that's all the kind of movies that I would watch when I was little so um, it was hard but you know I was one it was like one night I was bored I was like ah, I'll just give it a try. I have nothing else to do, so I I, I put it on on Netflix uh, instant streaming, and I completely I, I mean I'm not like lo in love with it, but it w I would have to say it took me by surprise. It was actually a very it was a it was a good film, and it was entertaining, and there were some parts in there that really did creep me out. Um, and I tend not to get creeped out by by horror films <laughs> at all. I would say it is. It's hard for me to jump, but this one yeah, this one did kind of you know. Um, uh, crawl up behind me but uh, no yeah if you want to get like uh, some good scares and have some fun time you know uh, at night in the dark then this is a movie that I recommend that you would that you watch uh, then the next one is um, the next one is oh my god <laughs> I love the name um, <laughs> cheers okay it's directed by Mike Nichols and this starts and it starts... Okay, go online, go online. So it's directed by uh, Mike Nichols and starring... Um, uh, Mike... <laughs> Shit! Oh my god! What is this? Uh, okay, let me, okay, it's a Mike, directed by Mike Nichols and starring uh, Meryl Streep and Jack Nicholson. And uh, let me just go to Meryl Streep's IMDb because I completely lost the name of the movie because <laughs> I'm horrible. Okay, the movie is called uh, Heartburn. There you go. Uh, Heartburn. And uh, this movie came out in 1986. Again, it's directed by Mike Nichols, written by uh, Nora Ephron, who, um, you know, just recently, yeah. you know, passed away. And uh, starring, again, one of two of the greatest actors that ever lived, Meryl Streep and Jack Nicholson. It's it's sort of like, it's a, it's a drama slash comedy. And it's incredibly entertaining it's more of an adult film it's definitely like definitely not for kids or or teenagers in the sense that it's 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 topics that kids and teenagers just wouldn't understand because these are middle-aged people who you know uh the story of middle-aged uh people who you who meet each other at a wedding and you know uh, and and then they decide to get married like right away and the movie's just that it's this it's it's we also we see them through their marriage you know through the years and what happens to them because of this and you know it's it's wonderfully written and directed and of course you know performed by these two great actors um and it, it's it, it's a very realistic you know take on on just a normal marriage and you know and and I've never been married, but I've, I've lived, you know, under a roof where, you know, where I saw this kind of, this kind of marriage. And 
it 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 it's so it's very it it becomes very close to you and um, uh, but after aside from that, you know, it's still very funny. Like the you, you just can't believe how how funny these two people can get, especially because they've done the majority of their work is just drama. You know, like Nicholson and Streep. It's all it's drama, drama, drama. So you really appreciate the comedy that they do every now and then. This is one of them, and of course, you know, Mike Nichols. I have yet to see a movie that has let me down from Mike Nichols. I swear to God, every movie I've seen from him, and I haven't seen all of them, um, have really, like, I've really satisfied me. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite films from him. And the third one is, uh, God dang it, I forgot, what is the third one? Um, of the documentary? <laughs> um, shit, okay. Uh, okay. It's yeah. something New York. Um, oh, Bill Cunningham. Bill, Bill Cunningham. There we go. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I apologize it's for that, scene. people. Bill, the third film is Bill Cunningham, New York, and it's a documentary about the, um, the, 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 the style section of the New York Times, the photographer who does that part. Um, and if you, if you read the New York Times, um, and, you know, especially the Sunday, Sunday New York Times, you'll see, you see, you'll see the, um, the section, you know, dedicated pretty much to this fashion photographer. And, uh, it's just, you know, uh, watching him, you know, you know, do his thing, you know, for the newspaper and just, you know, and then also the life, the fashion life of New York City, which is anything, I don't know, it, anything that has to do with New York City, I, to me, just it, it instantly, you know, tells, grabs, your, grabs my attention. And this one not only, you know, in, you know, not only introduces to a very particular character, human being, you know, but also gives us a glimpse of how how life in New York City is, you know, seen through this guy's uh, eyes, through this guy's point of view. And it's a very refreshing movie, a do very very refreshing documentary. It makes you, it's a feel good kind of movie too. Like you, there's really no dilemma. It's just watching this guy go about, you know his life, doing his job, doing what he loves the most, and, and, you know, doing art, basically. And uh, I highly recommend it because it just, if you want to have a good time, if you just, you know, if you just want to spend, you know, a, a Saturday afternoon just watching a feel-good movie, then this one probably is the one that I recommend you watch. So there you go. Uh, my, my, my three recommended for, uh, for this for our first podcast, uh, which was Heartburn, Insidious, and... Bill Cunningham, New York. So, we got there eventually. Yes, I apologize for that. <laughs> I've got my brain. We got there. My brain just went dead for a little bit. But anyway, um, any last words before we go? Uh, no, just that this is our first podcast. Hopefully, the one of uh, a few more at some point. Yeah. Uh, when we get the time, and uh, I think we enjoy it a lot. I hope the couple of listeners who have given this a try enjoy it as well and uh, this is our first attempt so if there yes. are little things here and there we will work them out we know we will yeah and uh you know i think it's going to be successful i think it'll be good i think so too. that's about it and you know I, you gotta you gotta give us a a, a, a you know a, a a chance listeners you know this is like our first time our first go around i kind of blame myself because like i i'm i i I don't. I still yet. I'm still learning how to use these, these technical things of how to record podcasts. Technology, the computer, it's, it's foreign, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, at least that yeah. aspect is. But the older people, what do they know about technology oh, and computers? I'm so old. No. I'm so old. I'm, so old. I'm only in my early twenties, but I'm still so old. But anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for listening. We really, really appreciate you taking the time, and uh, yeah. I'll let you close it. Oh, okay, um, thank you very <laughs> much. I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, we shall be back very soon. Yes. I promise. Hopefully. Okay. okay.